Dive with the Divine. I'm your host, Ashley, and together we'll be exploring the magical, the mystical, and everything in between. And today we're going to talk all about psalms, we're going to talk about saints, and we're going to talk about somebody who has the best, like, saint name I've ever heard. Okay, so here we go. I hope everybody's having a great day, and if not, I hope your day gets better soon. Today we have a twofer. Woo woo! Today episode is called Dying After Dying with the Divine After Dark. I'm doing it a little later because we have some guests from the West Coast and it's my pleasure. It's a fun time. We have the fantastic hosts of the Red Text podcast, Voga and Rai. Yeah. Rai is a queer and non-binary folk Catholic spiritual practitioner and devotee of La Virgin de Guadalupe. Something like that. <laughs> okay. Their, their magical practice draws upon their various ancestral backgrounds, such as Mexican brujeria, Latin American curanderismo. Curanderismo. No, no, it was oh good. My God, I'm so no, no, you're I'm very trying. good. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and Catholic mysticism. Rai has also been reading tarot for over seven years and helps their clients to integrate spiritual guidance and ancestral wisdom towards holistic healing of mind, body, and spirit. Voga is a queer folk Catholic mystic, witch, and psychic born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Being a child of Filipino and Spanish ancestry, Voga's work revolves around folk practices and traditions comprised of Marian devotion, saint magic, necromancy, and the mystic cultivation of relationships with local land spheres. Okay. Stemming from their upbringing of religious conditioning, Voga is a fierce deconstructionalist of institutionalized religion as part of a vast and diverse community of folk practitioners reconstructing what it means to be Catholic. Love that. Through the publication of the Red Text podcast, along with Rye, they are making Catholic mysticism and magic part of the larger occult conversation, bringing forth experience, knowledge, and perspectives. Okay. Oh, thank you guys <laughs> for both being here. Really appreciate it. I start out with asking every single person, what put you on this path for your, what put you on your spiritual path? Either of you can go first. Rise going so first. The, Always goes first. No, you go first. I'm <laughs> okay. I was, I was born and raised Catholic, although in my later teens, as I was starting to go off to college, I uh, was beginning to dissociate from my Catholic upbringing just because of mm -hmm. the association of like protestant christians saying that queers are going to be damned to hell right and it just didn't mm -hmm. make sense to me as i was especially coming into at the time gay identity i identify as queer now but at the time as i was realizing i was not straight mm -hmm. it was really hard to live alongside being raised catholic and then also hearing this rhetoric that i'm going to hell just for being who i am mm -hmm. and so i began to explore Eastern religions, Eastern religions and philosophies such as Buddhism and Hinduism throughout college and uh, a lot of New Age spirituality. And then as I was graduating back in 2019, I, I read this book called The Way of the Rose, which is about praying the rosary as a path to connect with the divine feminine, however she shows up for you. But she came back into my life as Mary, which led me also to Santa Muerte. And then when I started my ancestral practice, I just really started to dive back into Catholicism with this whole new lens and perspective integrating what I learned through new age practices and through my studies of Eastern religion and philosophy, allowing me to have this new esoteric view and mindset going back into Catholicism, which has yeah. just culminated into what it is today. And I'm also mixed race. I'm, I'm Filipino, I'm Mexican and white, which is Italian and Portuguese. And so I draw upon all of those backgrounds of my multiracial makeup to also influence the magic I do. Like you mentioned earlier, like I draw from Mexican brujeria, uh, Latin American curanderismo, and both of those already have heavy influence from Catholicism and Catholic mysticism. Mm -hmm. And so it's just how I got to where I am today. Um, the catalyst was really the rosary once I started praying that again in 2019. Uh, and Santa Muerte has also just been influential in my practice as someone who has struggled with mental health and mental illness, being able to find a patron saint who accepts everyone with open arms, regardless mm -hmm. of race, ethnicity, the crimes you may have committed, the quote unquote sins that you've committed. And because death comes for us all, she just felt so inclusive of everything that I am and stand for and was just right off the bat, super accepting and has also lent so much power and knowledge to me and my practice. 
So all of that from beginning till now is culminated into what I do today. Yay! Oh my gosh! I'm going to let Voga go, but afterwards I have lots of comments and I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of comments about yours too. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> What? We're, we cleared my schedule tonight to talk to you, so ask all the questions you want. Also, Ryan, I love to do this. Like, this is, like, our favorite thing to do is talk about our spirituality, so ask all we the can't questions. Shut up. Yeah. We can. And that's the reason why we are, our outlet is the podcast. It's just bitches who like to talk. Yes. Absolutely. So, yes. Hi, my name is Voga, and contrary to Rai's upbringing, I was not born and raised Catholic. I was I was born to a Protestant father and a Catholic mother. And I feel like my mom, through the influence of my dad, who has calmed down a little bit, but like growing up, he's just had a very like Jesus centered, I want my kids to be raised very Protestant, very Jesus centered, mm. very Christian-y, which is in some ways pretty antithetical to Catholicism. I would say that Catholicism is antithetical to Christianity. But anyways, Regardless of that, I grew up in an environment that was very Jesus-centered, very, like, God-centered, didn't really speak about Mary or the saints in any way, because it was seen as um, idolatry. It was mm -hmm. seen as blasphemous. It was seen as something that you don't necessarily do because um, Jesus and God are the center of your practice. They are the center of your faith. Mm -hmm. Um which I don't believe anymore. Um, Jesus and God do have, they do play a part within my practice, but they are not a focal point. They are not a, they are not the central uh, part of my practice. But in saying mm -hmm. that, I did grow up in a very Protestant-centered environment. I did cultivate a very sincere relationship with the spirits of Christianity. If you want to call it Jesus, I call it Jesus. But whatever that spirit actually is, I did cultivate a very sincere relationship with that spirit growing up until I started to really come into my queer or like what Rai said at the time, I only really labeled it as my gay identity. Mm -hmm. And I started to develop a very interesting, I don't know, complex in how I identified as a Christian, as I'm sure a lot of queer people have experienced in their life. So I disassociated myself from my faith. I didn't necessarily, you know, I don't know, dismiss it or abandon it. I just mm -hmm. stopped paying attention to it. I stopped cultivating it. I didn't really, you know, I wasn't very committed to it. I just let it like sit on the back burner for a while because I just wanted to live my life. And that was like around like the late, my late teens going into like my early 20s where I was just a loose goose and just doing the thing, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, didn't, I, I didn't like Jesus watching me while I was doing those things. So I just didn't invite him. You know what I mean? He wasn't invited. <laughs> so within my first couple of years of my 20s, I, I started to find like this. I don't know. I felt like I was floating a little bit. I didn't feel very grounded. And for some reason, I just didn't get myself to go back to my faith. I just what the, the faith was still on the back burner. It was still simmering. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't really cooking. I wasn't really. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really cooking within my Christianity. So I started to explore other forms of spirituality and I got into like this rabbit hole of new age spirituality, which I got into the ugly kind of toxic side of new age spirituality that was now hindsight is 2020. Now that I look at it, it was very, a lot of it was stolen Eastern traditions. A lot of it was stolen Eastern philosophies that was misappropriated and also bastardized. But at the time, it 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 granted me a little bit of of comfort because it was a lot of everything will be fine everything is great don't worry mm -hmm. about it just good thoughts good <laughs> vibes and in some way it granted me just a little bit of comfort but it, like the bad thoughts and the bad vibes always came back to bite me because i just never addressed mm -hmm. it yeah. and then going into like content on spirituality it's the gateway into witchcraft Mm -hmm. That's just what happens. That's just how the algorithm works. If you look at, look up any sort of spirituality on the internet, you just it's just the gateway yeah. into finding witchcraft in some way. So I started to dabble. At the time, I didn't know. I just thought it was just generally speaking witchcraft. But a lot of Eurocentric traditions, a lot of things that came, were coming from the 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 year of the witch, which was very Eurocentric, a lot of traditions from Irish traditions, British traditions, things like that. A lot of white people stuff. 
And mm-hmm. I didn't know it at the time. I just thought it was. And then I started to explore more of American um, American witchcraft and um, seeing a lot of American folk magic stuff pop up on the algorithm. And then eventually I started to identify as an eclectic witch. I don't say that anymore. And also makes me uncomfortable to say that um, mm-hmm. because I don't think I, I understand what that term means and why people use it. But at the same time, it's just like, mm, there, I think there's a little bit of nuance to it. But anyways, I don't want to get into okay. it. So uh, there was a little bit of an eclectic sauce. It was like, a, it was a very eclectic a sauce of magic that I was practicing. It was very mm-hmm. loose. It was very, it was ruleless. And then eventually, and that happened for a couple of years. And then eventually I started to consider, I don't know how it happened, but it just popped into my brain and was like, how would it feel to mix magic with Christianity? Mm -hmm. And so I started to like look, I started to like Google forums to see if there are anyone who practices in that way where it's like Christian, Christian mysticism and Mm -hmm. it exists. And I, I found this forum of all these people talking about Christian mysticism and how Christianity, not necessarily as like an umbrella term, but Christianity, like Protestant, Protestantism was very mystical, which in some ways it is. I don't Mm -hmm. believe that any sort of spirituality is, is, is lacking um, mysticism. I think you can find mysticism in any form of spirituality. And then I fell into another rabbit hole, which brought me to folk Catholicism, which is something Mm -hmm. that I never really, I never really considered. I am familiar with Catholicism because most of my family are Catholics. Mm -hmm. Uh, Most of my extended family are Catholics. So I'm I was familiar with the archetypes. I was familiar with some of the saints. I especially was familiar with Mary. Mm-hmm. And then that was the rabbit hole I never dug myself out of. I'm still falling <laughs> into it. And then eventually I, in a way, blended magic and Catholicism into like this really cool thing that has turned into what people call folk Catholicism now, which the term itself has gone through a lot of different definitions but this is just what we call it now this is what a whole bunch of people call it now and there's a whole entire thriving community of folk catholics who have come back to their upbringing or re 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 exploring their upbringing and deconstructing their upbringing to find the magic within catholicism because honestly catholicism has always been extremely ritual it's been extremely ceremonial it's been extremely magical Go to a mass and that if you take the Catholicism, if you take the Catholic aspect out of mass, it looks like a Sabbath. Like it looks like it looks like like a witch's ladder ritual. It looks so similar with the transubstantiation, the ritual prayer, the the conjuring of spirits, the and it's interesting that your podcast is called Dine with the Divine because that's what we do as Catholics is communion. It's communion with our spirits. It's communion Mm -hmm. with our with our faith so that's like a long-winded way of like me finding this path like i just started an instagram all of a sudden and one of my posts like made it onto other folk catholics algorithms and i made a whole bunch of friends that's how i met rye is Mm. through this post we followed each other and i was like oh this person is cool and then we (laughs) we just yeah yeah. and we just started talking and then a couple months after that we started producing the podcast and the rest is history and the amount of growth, I, I, I implore anyone to compare our first episode with our most recent episode, how crunchy that first episode was, and how, I, I mentioned this in, I think, our last episode, we sound so jaded now, like, we sound so much less enthusiastic, um, even though I'm still extremely enthusiastic and I still love what I do, but it's just, like, the way that we sound is just, like, so jaded and so, like, meh, it's just, like, we've given ourselves to this community and this community has spit us back out you know what i mean Um, not the catholic community but some of the catholic community but also (laughs) just like the cult community um Mm -hmm. so i'm just and then meeting more witches and meeting more magical practitioners some who i adore and some that i just don't have a taste for so we've just like both grown into becoming jaded which i think is a kind of a blessing because it helps us pay attention we become Mm -hmm. a lot more sophisticated i think (laughs) oh yeah um, yeah (laughs) I just think that there's a lot of growth in producing a podcast. I'm very happy about the podcast and just any podcast in general, because I think us making the the folk Catholic conversation a bigger part of the occult conversation 
has really within the last two years really flourished and more people are talking about it. And I mean, I, I, wa I listened to your episode with Echo and they mentioned the red text and they're an avid listener. And I was That's just like, you guys. Yeah, was I was like, oh, cool. I was being listened to that episode. They listened to the podcast and I saw that they were following the podcast. So I was like, so it's like it's part of the conversation now. And folk Catholicism, if you want to call it folk Catholicism, but folk magic has always held the hand of Catholicism through a lot of cultures. One of the biggest influencers right now, especially within the witchcraft community, is Frankie, who's Chaotic Witch on. And they are a, an Italian folk magician. A lot of their a lot of their practice is rooted in Catholicism because mm -hmm. Catholicism is so prevalent in Italy. And then same thing with Rai. Rai is a big part of their identity is their Mexican heritage. And Catholicism is so heavily prevalent in Mexico, as well as me, who is Filipino. And Philip mm -hmm. is, is so heavily Catholic. Um, mm -hmm. But there are differences and nuances to how people practice based on those biodomes. There mm -hmm. are things fell through the cracks and bled into Catholicism. That's why Catholicism looks so different around the world. It looks so folky and so just different than what the Roman Catholic Church is letting on. That's it. This podcast episode is over. I have nothing else to say. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding too. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That was a, a really big nutshell. Okay. Loving everything. First of all, I always tell everybody if they didn't want me to get into witchy stuff, they shouldn't have made me Catholic. Like, I'm like I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom grew up Seventh Day Adventist, so she d has no idea what's going on. But my dad was Catholic, and then I went to church with him, and I was like, basically, we just come here every Sunday morning to do spells. Because, like, what else are we doing? Like, mm -hmm. there's this is a side note rant. When I was younger, the church that we went to had a big bloody Jesus on the wall, like bloody, like all messed up. I love a bloody Jesus. It's hot. Love I a bloody Jesus. <laughs> yeah, muscly. So I guess like if I was into it, it would be cool. But like, I was five. <laughs> and I remember peeing myself one day in church by accident because I was like, I have to go to the bathroom. But I kept thinking about going to the, like leaving church while dirt mass was going was so bad. And like I was staring at Jesus and I was like, he can see me having to pee and he's mad at me because I have to leave. So I just would pee by myself. I'm like, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh <laughs> my like, God. He's like, you were a whole five years old. I don't understand why you couldn't just, I was like, I got so nervous. I'm like, that's like about what? I'm very confused. <laughs> you didn't know that Jesus was into piss play? Oh my God. He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> He's fine with this way. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, it's hot. I That's mean, when really he was funny. on the cross, he he what came out of him. He just started squirting. That's right. That's right. He was wet till the day he died. Uh, but the thing, just to comment on what you said, it's interesting how a five-year-old perceives mass, especially because they're the ones who are calling us groomers. When you walk mm -hmm. into a church, there's a half-naked man on a cross dying or dead it's like when we're talking about grooming children you force these children to believe in these ideals and you mm -hmm. also force these children to believe in these images and also jesus wasn't white mm -hmm. in all aspects of society there there are aspects of going to church that are extremely like you said damaging because that's something that shouldn't have happened to you you should have felt yeah. okay to stand up at the image of Christ and knowing that you needed to take care of your body. Mm -hmm. Autonomy is something that has been conditioned within us or you not having autonomy for your vessel is something mm -hmm. that's been conditioned and a lot of it is rooted in, it rooted in Catholicism and that's something that mm -hmm. we have really fought really hard to try to deconstruct. I love that. I think it so one thing also you said that made me like I remember when I I have had very different periods in my life also like I had a period where I was, I think I'm an atheist, but then I was like, nah, like too much crazy shit is always happening. I can't be. And there was a point where I, when I was like, like 13, 14, my, one of my best friends, I love her to death. My friend Jillian, she's super, super liberal, but she like really loves Jesus and like goes to church. <laughs> but she didn't like the social justice, like group at church. She's great. I love Jillian. Hey, Jillian, I'm real estate. So I started going to church because like she's going to church. So. I was like in youth choir and I got like very religious. And I remember we went to like this youth conference thing and I prayed the rosary. First of all, I was on my knees and it was stone. I was like, this is too long. I had never done the whole rosary. 
And I was like, this is wild. I have to get up. I was like 14 years old. I was like, this is too much. I know the Virgin Mary doesn't want me to be in pain. At this point, I was better about it. So I was like, all right, I know she wants me to get up because my knees are hurting. And the rose is, this has been, we've been here for an hour. What? Oh, we're not done. I was, like, I was praying the rosary for an hour. We were praying pleasure. the rosary for an hour. Longer we're praying than it at an half hour. speed. <laughs> 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 I was like, I can't do this. Like, I've got. I'm Were y'all like, spelling out the words? Like, what were you doing? <laughs> it just seems so. I don't know. And you know what? Maybe I was just really hot. Like in my head, maybe it was longer, but it seemed like forever. I had to leave. But <laughs> mug. I, I, there's so many things about, especially the ritual of Catholicism, that I really always love. I love like midnight mass, like Christmas midnight mass. Mm. It's like my favorite. If I can find a midnight mass, I'm going. I don't care. Oh, I love like this. Inf- like just the whole thing about it is, oh, it feeds my soul. And then also the other thing is I am I love history. That's part of the reason I do this podcast too. I love history. What I found now, like when I was young, I really liked to read books about. My parents are very, you are black, be happy about it. And I was like, no problem. I'm happy. Calm down. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but I read a lot of history books about African stuff and I love it, but. I remember I was like, wait, if Jesus is the one, I like Jesus. I was like, I read about him in his book. I enjoyed his book, but I was like, <laughs> I was like, if they use Jesus against us to make us feel like we're less than, I used to be like, is this Jesus' fault? I used to really question myself, be like, and then I realized, no, it's just these people. These people, they used it like against us. And then they told us that we were evil for what we believed before. But how could we, I remember having this crisis about, I really like Jesus, but I guess I'm not supposed to like him. And then I went like through a time where I met a lot of people who were participating in different like African traditional religions. And they're like, this is what you should do because this is who you are. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But I just didn't resonate with that either. So I feel like I had this very complicated. And I think I used to, like you were saying, Voga, I used to feel like Jesus had to be the center of anything of my life. And then I realized, like, no, he doesn't have to. He's my buddy. We get along very well. But he's just, like, one of my people. And we're cool. And it doesn't have to be this very intense, like, Jesus. And, like, like all these rules. And also, another thing I realized when I got older and I got more magical and into my my magic era, the religion (laughs) is supposed to be, not religion, I'm not going to use that word, spiritual past spirituality is the most supposed to liberate you it's supposed to make you feel free and mm-hmm. when i would be like when i would go to church it was always about rules it was always about this is this and you have to be like this and know this and no sex before marriage and if you're gay it's bad and this and that and i'm like all these things are making me unhappy <laughs> like, right so good like mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. god Tell me he wants me to be happy. And they, I'm lucky that my dad, for being a West African immigrant, is very chill. I would always be like, Dad, like, if I do something wrong, do you think God's cool with it? My dad's like, yeah. You just have to, like, say you're sorry. I was like, oh, this thing. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, great. <laughs> so happy to hear that. Yeah, I love your podcast. <laughs> I'm, like, rambling. God is chill. <laughs> I just love that. God is chill. God is chill. And like, so is Jesus. When you really read things about Jesus, Jesus was, I really wish some days I talk about this all the time. If Jesus came back and was just like, see the way we're talking about him, he'd be so mad. Oh, 100%. 100%. He's like, I didn't say any of this shit. You got. Right. He'd be like, guys, what the fuck? You're, not, you're doing the exact opposite of what I asked you to do. He's like, I just wanted us all to get along. Legit. Right. <laughs> also, I think at the same time as he'd be like, can y'all stop calling me? Can you guys do that? Just leave me alone. Like, there aren't all these saints for no fucking reason. Yeah, there are all these saints. Talk to my mom. She's fine. Like, stop calling me. I'm busy. You know what I mean? It's like, I did my job. I died. And you, <laughs> there's others. <laughs> Phone a friend. This is why mm-hmm. we have them. I know. Poor Jesus. He's like, look, I'm so Poor busy. Jesus. I'm, I'm <laughs> He's like, I'm like, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> calling me all the time i'm so stressed oh okay that was maybe that's rant. why he hasn't come back oh yeah he, he's like i can't come back <laughs> yeah <laughs> guys he's like, shut up needy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> y'all are needy 
keep calling me back all the time and i'm like what's the problem and nobody's telling me what the problem yeah right it's like bitch wait <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> i'm like i i get so i also get all my profits though all my favorite profits i'm like all of them came down they're all like we're being very misrepresented i don't think you guys got it but jesus is like when Christians get so upset, like, not Christians, I'm talking, now, when I say Christians, it was, like, weird ones, guys. The ones that are, like, <laughs> like, hellfire, like, those ones, the ones who are always screaming about hell and mm. witches and stuff, those ones, the weird ones. Um, they're, like, they think they know everything, and they're always like, ah, blah, 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 witches, blah, blah, blah. Jesus was turned water into wine. Jesus walked on water. It's the most witchy shit ever. I don't understand. That's, ma it's all magic. It's all, mm -hmm. it's all magic it's all the same exact thing you can call it whatever you want it's the same exact thing he was doing like and he was just like yeah in addition to me doing magic and shit i just wanted to tell you guys to all chill out and be nice and we're like okay but now then but then he never said anything about witches he's never mm -hmm. whatever i could go on this i'm not gonna go on this rant i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go to your about. podcast. I know. <laughs> I was like, we're in your house. You can talk all you want. No, I'm going a little crazy. So I'm going to, we're going to go to our next section because it has to do with Jesus. The next part <laughs> is our dish of the week. And I was like, you know what I want to talk about? All the foods that people say they found Jesus in. Like all the mm. figures of Jesus <laughs> that people have seen in food. Because what's happening? Like, I don't know. I found... Of course, a BuzzFeed listicle, because good old BuzzFeed, it's always here for us. So these are 22 people, 20, let's say 22 places people found Jesus in their food. These are the different types of food that people saw Jesus in. Okay, ready? Okay. The first one is the potato chip. I'm going to put this in the show notes, everybody, so you can look. The potato chip just looks like a black smudge. Don't think it's Jesus, but hey, to each his own. <laughs> Somebody found it in a Cheeto. That's fun. A fish stick. This also does look like Jesus a little hmm. bit. That's not so bad. This one is just a burnt taco. It's not Jesus. They just burn the outside of the taco. That's stupid. Um, <laughs> not a sin in and of itself. Wait, well, how'd you burn it? What's... How did you fuck up a taco? I don't know. You, you cook you everything. Like... You cook everything separately. <laughs> what the hell? Everything is. <laughs> you want to try to cook it at the same time? What the fuck is wrong with people? <laughs> the easiest thing to make a pancake okay fine pancakes but a banana that's not jesus that's just a moldy banana an orange a naan okay a pierogi great a pizza a banana chip a pretzel that's not jesus that looks like a sculpture it's not jesus pita bread that's also weird a grilled cheese it's just like the burn patterns on this food most of it um a Cheeto that looks like a crucified Jesus. Okay, maybe. Just looks like a stick figure. Marmite? Okay. You guys are stretching now. Ice cream? <laughs> no. I didn't even read this list before I found it. I was just like, I'm just going to read it off the cuff. Um, a Funyun? Ew, I don't like the smell of Funyuns. It bothers me. It's <laughs> a chip. And a moldy apple. Again, with the moldy food, I would be embarrassed to be putting my moldy food on the internet, but that's okay. It was okay. And then... Sedatan? Sedatan? I don't know what sedatan is. It looks... I don't know what that is, but that's fine. It does not does not look like Jesus, but it does look like one of those wall mounts of Jesus. Like a hmm. big cross with him, like, falling on. It does, okay. Looks like it. Okay, so those are 22 foods, everybody. Please check out the article so you can see if you agree with it. I don't know if it really looks like it, but we're going to move forward in this show. But I'll, at the same time, I just want to comment on the fact that these these yeah. things that people perceive to look like Jesus, Jesus didn't look like that. Jesus, yeah. most likely the depictions of Jesus who, that you see in art is most likely depictions of Constantine or was it Da Vinci's gay lover? I think it was Da Vinci's gay lover. Uh, oh, some theory of sorts. It was like, I think yeah, it was a that's the there, thing. there are all these theories that 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 the, the image of Jesus is based on different European people. So mm -hmm. it's either you're looking at Da Vinci's gay lover or Constantine. I mean, th this happens all over the world. It happens. It it also doesn't happen with just Jesus. I can't even remember. I can't even remember how many images I saw when I was like 
I don't know, like 10 or 11 on the internet of people like zooming in on the smoke of the 9-11 attacks, finding oh. images oh of the God. devil. Yeah. That was terrible. Like it, people want to see what they want to see. I've seen the grilled cheese Jesus before, like that was, but I th also think that that was, that was staged. It's mm -hmm. people see what they want to see. There are times where I'm looking up at the, there are people who do divination in the clouds. You, I, I want to say, okay, finding Jesus in a Cheeto isn't necessarily a sign, but also at the same time, I'm not as presumptuous to think, to take, to say that it isn't a sign. Mm -hmm. Like when we talk about we've talked about them on the podcast before especially with recognizing signs and how signs should be discerned you should look for patterns if you see jesus once on a cheeto then it probably isn't jesus trying to talk to you it's probably just yeah. the way the cheeto looks mm -hmm. but if you see jesus in a cheeto and you see jesus on a leaf and then you see jesus in front of you <laughs> then maybe that's more close to something <laughs> that you should be paying attention to but it's novelty like, it's oh my god jesus oh my god <laughs> It's just some guy that looks like Jesus. And just remember that Jesus didn't look like that. But yeah, I want someone, I just want to take a note. I want someone to go back to the beginning of this episode and start counting how many times we've said Jesus at, up to this point. And take That'd a shot fun. every time. Take a shot every hospital time. Bill. Drink response? Yeah. Um, nah. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> or, um, yeah. You guys are hilarious. Um, also, so speaking of, again, I'm going to say Jesus. So years ago, I went to Israel to visit my friend who was living there. And she was telling me how there's... So you know how sometimes there are, like, mental illnesses, but they're literally, like, regional? There is a thing that in Israel, there's, like, whole units in psychiatric hospitals for people who think they're Jesus. A lot of people just Whoa. go there and they just think they're Jesus. Interesting. And yeah, so they just have, like, units for that. And I was like, huh. She told me that one. I was like, that's... I guess it makes sense if somebody is having huh. whatever's going on with them and they think maybe I'm the Messiah and I don't know what may be going on. They could be having a manic episode. They could be having a mm -hmm. psychotic episode. Who knows? And they'd be like, they could be I Jesus. Mean, they Or they could be <laughs> Jesus. Like, like, they could be anything. I don't know. But I was like, oh, interesting. That's it's like Jesus was like, I keep turning into these people. They keep locking me up. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm trying to... I've been trying the second coming, y'all. It's been happening since the 40s, but they keep locking me up. <laughs> All those patients are it. my dream blunt rotation. <laughs> Can you imagine the shit that they must come up? Oh, so much fun. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is the point of the show where I plug myself real quick. If you're enjoying this show, keep listening to it, number one. Number two, follow us so you get a new episode every Thursday. Number three. Follow me on socials if you'd like. I'm on Instagram, Threads, TikTok, and Facebook. Dime with the Divine on all of them. And if you really like the show, you can give us a rating. I really love ratings and I love reviews. If you can give me one, that's so nice. Apple Podcasts or Spotify is great. You can leave me a tip if you really want to. Not necessary, but I don't mind. And if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, please be nice. Email me at dimewithadivinepod at gmail.com. Okay. I had two things I was going to talk about. I was mm -hmm. like, let's talk about Psalms. And I was like, no, we can't talk about that because we will be on here all night. <laughs> I, I just want to mention one thing about Psalms. Yeah. Like, if y'all want to really talk about what a spell book looks like, read the Psalms. Because mm -hmm. that is literally what a spell book is and what it feels like and what it's structured and how it's structured. Yep. There is an incredible book that that I is it is still in rotation for me. It is something that I never put down. It I actually need to get myself another copy because this thing is falling apart. It's somewhere on my altar, but it's called The Power of the Psalms. I don't remember mm -hmm. who the author was, but I know her last Anna name Riva. is Rivas. Yeah, Riva. Anna and Riva. Anna Riva. And it is incredible because it is its own Psalter, but it's also everything underneath it is things that you can do with that Psalm. So there's a mm -hmm. Psalm to bless your pet. There's a Psalm to curse. There's a Psalm to... It's incredible. So... If I want to put any two cents into how incredible Psalms are, its own beautiful spell book, and it's it's its own honestly its own grimoire. It is gorgeous, mm -hmm. and it's extremely powerful. And if you want to learn more about the Psalms, we have an incredible episode on our podcast that says that we talk about the Psalms with one of our friends, Chris, and it is extremely educational, very dense in in, in information. So have a pen and paper, but it's a really mm. great episode. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put the book and I'm going to put a link to that episode in the show notes so everybody can check that out. Um, 
And the only thing I'll mention about the Psalms that I learned because I was like, what is this? Psalm 119. If you have any physical problems, just <laughs> read that one because it has mm-hmm. go through every single problem, every, I guess it's verse, every, every subsection, we'll just call it that, is a letter of the Hebrew alphabet and it, it cures like all sorts of stuff. Boils, like the sores, your limbs. It's wild. So that's all you need to know. Which is. It's Over also a list. really great banishing spell. It's a good ban. That psalm is a great oh, banishing. Okay. A banishing. A banishing um, one. Okay. Is that the one that's first. the longest psalm? The yes. One okay, mm-hmm. that's right. That yeah. so long. I was I was doing like my little research. I was like, this is. I don't understand how long. I was like, ooh, this is a good prayer, but I'm tired. Mm-hmm. It's a fantastic uh, psalm to recite little, while you're cleansing your space and cleansing mm-hmm. yourself. Little, it's a little really tip: good one. if you want to read the whole book of Psalms in a month, just read five five psalms a day, and if there's, I think. 30, yeah, 30 days in a month, you'll have the entire book of Psalms done. Oh, look at that. Oh, another tidbit. Oh, we're getting so many good tips. I love it. Okay. So now we're going to go to, this is going to be our tea time for today. So today's tea time is because I was curious. And since we're talking to the fam of the Red Text podcast, we have to talk about some, we're going to talk about saints because saints are wild. <laughs> like everything about that. Totally. Them. Yeah, official saints and unofficial saints. They're just wild. I don't know what's going on. I was like, I don't remember. I know like some of the steps, but I was like, I don't remember all the steps to become a saint. So I was like, let's go over that. Everybody, this is the definition of a saint. And that now there's quote unquote saints. You can use that word for anybody who's usually in a high spiritual path or like a high position in a spiritual path in any religion. But some people just use that word. But right now I'm talking about it purely in Catholicism. Um, and so according to the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, this is the definition of a saint. Saints are persons in heaven, officially canonized or not, who lived heroically virtuous lives, offered their life for others, or were martyred for the faith and who are worthy of imitation. So I think it's interesting in this one that they say unofficial or not, because there's a whole thing about it. Like... It's a big deal to be an official saint, and you'll see what you can do. It's like you get special pins. It's like moving up in the Girl Scouts. It's fun. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) It is. Totally. You get you get like a new. I remember when I was like a brownie, and then I was like a junior, and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, (laughs) to becoming a saint. (laughs) The steps to becoming a saint. The first one is the person has to be dead for five years. The second one, now. The person must be a servant of God. You think like we'll use an example of anybody who people were like, oh, they should be a saint, like Mother Teresa. They want everyone's like, make her a saint right now, but she was still alive, so she didn't qualify. She wasn't dead. Then she died. Great. Five years later. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I don't mean great. She died. Sorry, Mother Teresa. But I don't know. I heard she was racist. Yeah, I heard she was racist too. And then it was like, for the longest time, I didn't know she was Polish. I was like, what? She? I just assumed she was. Indian because she lived in Calcutta, but oh, she was Polish. And then I did her, she was racist. I was like, Mother mm. Teresa, oh, Mother Teresa, I'm like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then you have to be a servant of God. This means now there's a couple steps. Number one, a formal request from an individual, I guess it could be anybody, they have to send a letter to the special Vatican Tribunal. Also, one day I'm going to do a whole episode on how weird shit is in the Vatican because there's weird shit going on there. Very weird shit. Yeah, so the- right. 100%. Oh. When the church governs itself, absolutely, there's weird shit. There's definitely weird shit going on, going on at the Vatican. Mm-hmm. Yes, just very weird shit. Like all sorts of weird magical shit. And then also, but it wasn't like long enough. I was reading about like the official like school for like exorcists. Like there's like an official exorcist school. And it's like if you're a real exorcist, you go to like exorcist college at the Vatican. It's so like, fucking cool. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's like University of Phoenix, but for exorcists. Yeah, total. It's like UEI. <laughs> you know what I mean? UEI. Oh, God, that's so funny. Yeah, not University of Phoenix. I can't. Is University of Phoenix still open? Are they? Did they shut down? I think so. I don't hear the commercials anymore. I don't know. I oh, imagine. I don't know. That's a good question. Education connection, it. maybe? I don't know. Not education connection. For free. With oh, an no. education, education connection. connection. Is that the one where the guy, like, it always came on in the middle of the day, the guy's like, get off off couch, you lazy assholes, go to school. And you're like, what? No, it's that, you it's that, it was that chick who was, 
No, it was that chick who was who was a waitress. Remember, she was talking oh. about I was like, I don't know what to do with my life. Yeah, and then I, I found education connection. I'm thinking of the other angry guy. It was some other. I don't know if that was for Devry or something. Anyway, oh my God, the lyrics are ingenious. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Works too. I know, Devry. Mm. Okay. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> although we're talking about like maybe defunct colleges, I don't know. Um, Okay, so anyway, sorry guys, I got real off topic. I apologize. Uh, University of Phoenix <laughs> is still active, by the way, just to let you know. Okay, oh, thank God. I was worried. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I was curious. They have a 27% graduation rate. Let's wow. not. That's bad. That's, That's bad. really bad. <laughs> what is everyone mm -hmm. getting so upset about with the University of Phoenix that they just no. drop out? Oh, yeah. no. All right, well. There's no Phoenixes. <laughs> Where's the fire and where's the where... birds coming out of it? I know. I demand fiery birds. I'm dropping out. I want my tuition back. <laughs> I only signed up for the sole purpose of seeing this phoenix. <laughs> this is insanity. Okay, so we got somebody who wrote a letter. And the letter has to explain how this person lived a life of holiness, pureness, kindness, and devotion. Okay, that's nice. And then the candidate must read the requirements that the tribunal... And then the tribunal will officially recognize them as a servant of God, level one. Okay. So this is your first, this is, you know, when you're, what do you get when you're, I forget the, what they call you, the first Girl Scout, but you wear a blue apron. I don't know if they still do. It was in the 90s. Maybe wear something else now. But you get like your first patch. Let's call it patches. You get your first patch. You're a servant of God. Yay. Oh my gosh. You see, even though everybody with the praying hands, everyone's so excited for you. Okay. Number two. <laughs> yeah. Then we have to find out if you're heroically virtuous. So the tribunal is sent to then another group, the Congregation of the Ca Causes of the Saints at the Vatican. So this is another, they're another committee that you're now, it's passing. It's like a bill, just a bill, but it's passing through all the houses. Sitting on um, Vatican <laughs> Hill. <laughs> you have to go to another group. So that congregation is comprised of theologians, card cardinals, archbishops, bishops, people who studied that person's life and writing to ensure that they're in line with the teachings of the church. So to make sure they were like a decent ass person. That doesn't always happen, but don't worry about it. It's the Catholic church. We can't trust them all the time. So next, the candidate must be found to possess four cardinal virtues and three theological virtues to be declared venerable and heroic and of heroic virtues. The cardinal virtues are prudence, justice, temperance, and courage. And then the theological virtues are faith, hope, and charity. So you have to make sure that this person has all these traits and everybody's got to agree, the congregation. Get your second patch. Woohoo! Everyone thinks you have the virtues. Okay, now it gets wild. So now they're because, a brownie. Got it. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Thank you. Now they're a brownie. <laughs> Get your brown vest. You look really cute. Mm -hmm. So now is where it gets crazy because now is the beautification and miracles. Okay. Two things. We have two branches of this tree. Number one, if the person was martyred, meaning they suffered death or persecution in the name of their faith, that person can maybe beautified and named blessed without further investigation. So you can go straight to the top if you were martyred. Get okay, out of jail free. Yeah, get out of jail free. That's what I was thinking. Of. Yeah. <laughs> this is a locally recognized sainthood whereupon this person may be worshipped in their city diocese region or religious community so it may just be like a local thing you but you get to go all the way to the top quickly i'm all the way up and then if you <laughs> if the person's not martyred now they got to go through some more stuff if the person's not martyred the person must be responsible for the occurrence of a posthumous miracle verified by the congregation okay people have to witness now there's different kinds of miracles and I think some of the miracles, I'm like, I don't know if this is a miracle, but I guess it, or it's just a magical happenstance. Okay, so the miracles can include your standard miracle, a healing. Somebody went, they touched something that the, that person, the saint, the person who's going to be a saint, owned, or say they were at the grave of this person and something happened, they became healed. Yay, beautiful, we're all so happy. Also, this one, didn't know about this one, liquefaction. So apparently there's this saint. I don't know if there's any other saint like this. There's a saint called Saint Januarius. Mm. And Saint, okay, this guy. They died in 305 CE. But once a year, 
his blood just becomes liquid sometimes. It's dry, and then it just becomes liquid once a year. There was only seven times in the past... Okay, this has been happening since 1386. Since then, there's only seven years where it didn't happen. And it always becomes liquid on the day that he died. But then sometimes one other time during the year also. They're like, it's a miracle. I don't know if they're healing people with it or it's just cool that it happens. It's like, a, sure. it's like a Catholic Groundhog Day. It's a whole thing. We'll gather around to see whether or not the blood liquefies. And uh, I don't oh. know if you're going to get to this, Ashley. So forgive me if I'm jumping no, ahead. No, please do because I want um, Go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, some believe that when it does, the years that it doesn't liquefy is actually like a portentous omen that something bad is about to happen. Oh. Uh. No. So I think I, I forgot what the catastrophic events that did happen that coincided with it not liquefying. I'm sure it can be Googled, but I think I think the date of his death recently passed too, because I remember seeing it's a news September article 19th. about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was in Italy when it happened. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah so it's funny that you said that, that it's a bad omen. The last time it happened was 2020 and we were ripe into COVID maybe. that Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Thanks, St. Um... January is. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm, I don't know you. <laughs> the other one is incorruptibility. So that means that the body doesn't decay. It just hangs out and it's cool and everything's fine. And the last one is the odor of sanctity. Both of those two happened to Padre Pio. His body didn't decay for a minute and they were like, what's going on? And then also it, his body was supposedly smelled like, his wounds smelled like roses, but his body smelled I think also of roses or something else good. Hmm. Yeah, for a while. Who the fuck was all up in his room just like, mm, that smells good. <laughs> yeah, who tried it? Plenty of people. I think we're doing scientific tests on his wounds, on his stigmata, and they're like, bro, what's going on? And he's like, I don't know. And then the Catholic Church was mad at him for a minute, but then they forgave him because they're like, maybe this is magical. Uh, but at first they were like, stop with your wounds. This is weird. Um <laughs> Ten bucks, it was like some fratty cardinal who was like, bro, I'll give you 20 bucks. 20 bucks <laughs> to sniff that wound. <laughs> if you don't, you have to take a shot. Of St. January's just blood. <laughs> exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I just want to say, though, if anyone ever has a chance to see an incorruptible saint's body in person, it is really moving and powerful, regardless if you're Catholic or not. Mm -hmm. There's one Eastern Orthodox saint here in San Francisco um, it's St. John of something. Um, he's in a Greek, I think it's a Greek Russian Orthodox church here in San Francisco. His body's there. And then when I was in Italy, we got to see blessed Carlo Acutis's incorruptible body. It is wild because, uh, some incorruptible bodies, they'll put like a thin layer of wax over the hands and the face. Cause those parts may have like very slightly decayed, but St. Mm -hmm. Carlos or uh, sorry, blessed Carlos Acutis, his body's like completely incorruptible. Like I thought his face and hands were covered in wax, but that was just straight up his face mm -hmm. and hands. Like it looked like he hadn't decayed a single cell. I also got to see the incorrupted body of St. Clair of Assisi and her body is one of those incorruptible ones that does have a slight wax covering on the hands and face, but the body uh, in and of itself is completely intact. It's very moving to see those in person. It's very just mind blowing. So. It just reminds me that fucking magic is real, bro. Come on. Yeah. It's so real. It's so crazy. Oh, I love that. I think also not a saint at all, but I think lemon body is, but they did something to it, but the Russians won't tell us. It's okay. We don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> they did something to it. Some other miracles that may have happened. Oh, so, so some of the miracles also can be things that were wild that happened when the person was alive. So again, I'm going to talk about Padre Pio because he's the one that I know the best and we talked about him on a prior episode, but he, so some of them were levitation, he did that, by location, he did that, and stigmata, which is like a big one. If somebody gets a stigmata, everyone's like, oh shit, it's mm -hmm. stigmata, like it's a big, it's a big one, it's not a joke. Okay? 100% it ain't a joke. If something <laughs> like that happens to you, I was like, bro, what is happening to you? <laughs> that shit's not funny. <laughs> That shit's not funny. Like, it's so scary. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be pissing in the pew, just like you when you were five. I'd be pissing in the pew. Oh my God. Also, people levitating. Not, to me, I'm sorry. I'm not okay with it. I'm nervous. If I see someone levitating, I think, okay. And I Possession. know I have, Chris yeah, Angel. I have conditioning and I understand that. People are like, oh, and like, it's fine. I'm like, nope, not for me. Let me tell you something. I'm very West African 
I, I don't see people levitate. It means it's a spirit and it means it's probably not good. I know my ancestors have told me. They said, run. That's no problem. I will. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm scared. Okay, I see too many spirits. I'm nervous. That's healthy. That's okay. That's healthy. <laughs> rational. Rational. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not going with anybody who's levitating, but okay. Now, your miracle has been performed. You're you're doing great. Guess what? You're about to graduate. Oh my God, you're going to be kind of that. Um, <laughs> so this means that one or more miracle has happened in, this, in the saint's name posthumously. And then there's a papal decree, big fucking deal. And then there's a special mass just for you. It inducts you into being a saint. Oh my God, it's so exciting. After canonization, you get a couple prizes. Number one, that your name gets to be added to the catalog of saints and every member in the Roman Catholic Church is allowed to worship you and pray to you as a saint. Magical as fuck, but that's fine. Churches can be dedicated to you. Your, this, your name can be invoked into prayers. Ooh. Masses may be offered in that saint's name. You get to have your own feast day. Oh my gosh. What are we eating? It depends. I hope the food is seasoned. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't trust everybody. The saint's relics are enclosed in vessels and publicly honored. Okay. I have a question. Catholics are super big about like idolatry being bad, but then they take people's stuff and they pray to it and they touch it and they're so obsessed with people's stuff. Isn't that mm -hmm. like idolatry? I don't so know. So no. There's like a theological thing around it because it's not necessarily the worship really? of the item. It's necessarily more to do with the faith of the grace of that item associated with that saint than helping like with intercession and grace from okay. God. So it's not like, I'm going to worship this piece of cloth that touched St. Francis. Okay. Rather, it's like, okay, this belonged to this holy man who therefore like the grace is associated with that will bring me closer to God. Does that make sense? Okay. And there's That's also that conversation sense. about them talking about how thou shall not worship false idols. Which mm -hmm. I think is a very subjective concept. What what dictates a false idol t from a true idol? I think that's totally subjective to yeah. the person. Mm -hmm. If it's something mm -hmm. that's canonized by the church, then okay, that there's an argument there. Mm -hmm. But I think just declaring that false idols should not be worshipped, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does it mean mm -hmm. by false? But does it mean that there's no spiritual substance there? Is it fake? Like, is there mm -hmm. no spiritual significance there because i would argue that as an animist that everything has some sort of spiritual juice do you mean by false idols that it's not recognized by the catholic church then there's a conversation it's like okay so let's talk about that like you you're saying that a false idol is something that isn't canonized by the catholic church i see where you stand now but when mm -hmm. you say false idol what does that actually mean mm -hmm. what does false mm -hmm. really mean yeah, the, I, I think people need to be a little bit more consistent with the idea of what a false idol actually means. Mm -hmm. um, because I think just worshiping some inanimate object that you believe has some sort of spiritual, is a spiritual house in some way. I can call a skeleton key, um, I can invoke Christ into a, spell, a skeleton key and it's not an image of Christ, but it is something that I feel has the spirit of Christ in it, mm -hmm. that considered a false idol. Because Christ is considered canonized, but that the key is not. Mean, again, this is why I do this podcast, because I like to learn. So both of you are making me think, and you're both educating me, and I, I love it. Thank you. This is the whole reason I do this. That's, that's the reason. Think. That's what I'm saying is that a skeleton key traditionally would think uh, is traditionally used to open roads, right? It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a road opener. And that's what I did with my skeleton key. I think you can see it. It's hanging on my wall. You see that? I, I can't really point at it. Um, it's over oh, there. Yeah. It's next. It's next to my pentagram. But um, that's mm. my skeleton key, and it's it's um, it's consecrated to um, it's consecrated to Saint Anthony. Mm. So Saint Anthony is actually that is one of my spirit houses for Saint Anthony because Saint Anthony helps me open open roads financially. Mm. So is that considered a false idol? I don't know. Mm. To me, it's not. Very interesting. That is something to that is something to think about. Yeah, the, yeah. There's no like really good definition. Yeah. Oh, and St. Peter, too. St. Peter's a really good one for road openers, just so you guys know. Mm, okay. It holds I the like keys that. to the church. That's right. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And also, thank you, Rai, for making me understand now, because I used to be, like, very confused. Now you've cleared that up. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Hmm. So, I do you think really? relics are rad as fuck, though. Oh, relics are cool. Don't get, I like them. <laughs> I love them. Okay. I just like old stuff. 
also i like anything that's old i think it's awesome i'm like it's oh old. thank you <laughs> oh no i'm probably older than you it's fine okay now we're gonna do our story time about our favorite this is our favorite new saint who's not really a saint because i thought she was a saint but she's not but it's fine her title is christina the astonishing sounds like hmm. a magician in vegas yeah. Um, 100%. She yeah. sounds like a Long Island medium. Or a drag queen. <laughs> or, or a drag queen. That, maybe that was her drag name. She just didn't have like a word for it back then. Right, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Welcome to the stage. <laughs> Christina. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so Christina, I was, she was, sometimes she was Christina the Astonishing, or Christina the Amazing, or Christina Mirabilis. We're, we're going to go with Christina the Astonishing. <laughs> That's her government name. That's her yeah. <laughs> Um, so Christina the Astonishing, she was born in 1150, and she was born in this place called Brustum, which is in the Flemish region of Belgium. She was born to peasant parents who raised her as a committed Christian, and then they both died, unfortunately, when she was 15. Her parents died, and she lived on a farm, and she had two older sisters who took care of her, and they made her go work as a shepherdess. Being a shepherdess is the kind of profession that puts you to be a saint, I feel like. A lot of people doing a lot of things with sheep. Jesus loves sheep. There's a whole all these stories. We know how it goes. <laughs> we love the sheep. <laughs> love the sheep. Love so the therefore, sheep. so Christina, when she was 21, had a terrible seizure, and it was. And back then, people didn't understand seizures, so they thought she had died. There is this thing after. I'm going to use my nurse knowledge. There is this thing after a seizure. It's called a post ictal phase, where people can become very sleepy. So maybe this was what was going on and people thought she was dead. I don't know what, how they thought, the, but anyway, they thought she was dead. So they put her in a coffin. Okay. So then they went to the church and they were all like, oh my God, it's so sad. Christina's dead. She was so young. Oh. And so she was in the church and all of a sudden Christina levitated out of the coffin. Again, we're nervous, but whatever. She levitated out of the coffin up into the church rafters. And the priest ordered her to come down. <laughs> Christina, get down. Get your ass back down. What are you doing? Get your ass back down. Girl, get your ass back down. I love that part of the story that it was just like, and the priest told her to come down. I was like, what? <laughs> Who was the priest? It's, it's like talking to a cat. <laughs> hey. Down from there. Scat. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime yeah. you keep saying levitated, I can't help but hear it in Beyonce's narration voice of Renaissance when she's just like, well, lemonade. She's like, I levitated. <laughs> oh, if only Beyonce was here to, to quote that. I would love it. Um, if Beyonce was here, I would oh, be pissing my fucking pants right me now. Too, like, I there was like, no I'm way not, I'd be talking. I know. And I'm not even like a crazy Beyonce fan, really. Actually, sometimes she gets on my nerves, but I would, it's let's, still Beyonce. Let's, Let's move on. Yeah. guys. <laughs> like, oh, my God, like, yeah. <laughs> okay, so. If there's just... anything that you're going to get canceled for was what you just said, not oh, everything else that you've done. <laughs> they're all coming for me, and I'm yeah. probably going to have to edit that out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get so much hate mail. Um, I love you, Beyonce. Okay, so the priest was like, come down from here, Christina. So she came down, and then <laughs> she was like, oh, my God, it was so crazy. I was in heaven. And I was in hell, and I was in purgatory, and I was like, okay, girl, purgatory's made up, but don't worry about it. We'll talk about it Wait, later. Wait, so she and woke then, up? Yeah. She came down for the rafters, and then she was like, well, I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh, my God, I'm here. And they were like, like surprise. <laughs> hey, guys. And they're like, what's happening? And they're so confused. So then... She so yeah, she was like, I went to heaven, and I went to hell, and I went to purgatory. It was so crazy. When I was there, God was like, Listen, you can either stay here or you can go back down to earth and perform penance for the soul stuck here in purgatory. And she was like, I'm gonna go back and help people out. And God's like, Okay, like whatever the sound is when you get thrown back into earth is what happened. <laughs> 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 She, I guess she came after she woke up and she's telling the story. Everybody's like, what? And then she was like, I renounce all luxuries and I'm going to just be like a simpleton for the rest of my life. I don't want money. I just want to live like in rags and that kind of thing, like on purpose. So Christina then also had this aversion to the smell of sins. 
Like she could smell sin on somebody <laughs> and she would be like, I can't be around you. I'm thinking Ooh, like girl, I know that. Twilight. I know. Just like. <laughs> 100%. I know what that smells like. I know what sin smells like. It smells like a musty, dark room with leather sheets and poppers. That's what sin smells like. Oh, my God. I smell it. <laughs> Here. it smells like chlorine. Just, if, you, if you get really up close to Voga, you'll you'll know the scent really well. That's right. You can smell me before you see me. <laughs> what does that smell? It's the sin. Yeah. <laughs> Not the sin. Apparently, she would climb. So, because first of all, because of her smell problem, she was like always in trees. Like, <laughs> okay, this sounds like a joke. No, this I, sounds so made up. This it sounds like a bad thing. Up. I did research. I have links. So she would climb up into trees, also just to like pray, and she would like sit on like really skinny branches, and everybody thought she was gonna fall off, but she'd be fine. So she'd be up there just like praying and stuff. And then she also was like really into fire for some. She was a pyro, and she would <laughs> she would like jump into flames and climb into ovens, and she would be screaming. And then people would be like, "Christina, just come out of the oven." <laughs> she sounds like a fucking menace. <laughs> she sounds like a How fucking. Not calling her a witch. That's like if anyone did that and said it wasn't Christ, they'd be like witch. <laughs> What's going on with Christina? This I bitch saw, like, said she saw heaven. She is not a witch. She, she saw heaven. She talked to God. <laughs> oh, God. I was like, yeah, Christina just come out the oven. But she would come out of the oven and she'd be totally fine. Like, she would be no, like, burns or anything. So everyone's like, okay, great. This is God. Again, I am also confused about the witch thing. I'm like, so when did we think everything was a witch? I guess not yet. Okay. Wait, I'm so, sorry. Pause. Have y'all yeah. seen the TikTok trend where people like fake being they're like in customer service and they'll be like, just scream for help if you need anything, and they'll walk away, and then the other person like, lets <laughs> off the most blood scream. Blood hurtling <laughs> scream. Just like no. <laughs> they're like, uh, can, you can I get some napkins? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can I get like, some that, napkins? That's that's what I see Christina doing. She's in the oven, just like, <laughs> hey guys, hey, I'm actually I'm fine. <laughs> that's exactly what's happening. He talks to God again. <laughs> Turn the oven to 350 and I heard yeah. it just speak straight to me. Yeah. Apparently, also, she would race madly through the streets. So then, here's the thing that's so weird. So people thought she was super, God was super going through her, but then also sometimes they thought she was possessed. But only when she was running? Like, not when she was in the oven? I don't know. <laughs> Y'all, look, she's just a quirky girl. <laughs> she's just like, she's just, she has she's quirky. Yeah, she's like, yeah, a girl. She, oh, what like, the fuck? I don't know what just happened. That's okay. That's a thing I get. It's that. Christina. I know. <laughs> oh my God. Fucking menace. She's a fucking menace. She's, get down from there. she's sending, yeah, she's sending confetti to rice. Get fucking out of I'm How the cookies. fuck did that happen? Did I don't do that? know. That's wild. I have no idea. Oh my God. It is Christina. She's, it is Christina. Christina. She's on the I love that you said, Voga, that she's a menace. Because she literally, can you imagine living like your neighbor being Christina? You come home from, you come home from whenever, okay, let's say you come home from the late night, you were out with your friends, you come home, and all you hear is screaming from the next house or apartment next to you. You go to see what's the problem, because I'm a nosy bitch. I will go and investigate. Um, I'm like, what's happening? And I just see the oven and a leg sticking out, and she's screaming, and I'm just, girl. You know what I pictured in my head? I pictured Ashley, like one of those TikToks of people being nosy and like vacuuming their lawns. That's like they they have a vacuum on their lawns. Like, what the 100%. fuck is Christina up to now? Yeah, one hundred percent. I there was a transformer like two blocks away from my house that exploded. Sound like gunshots? What did I do? I saw two people walking towards it. I was like, must be safe. Walked all the way down. I was investigating, and then I saw all the other families like in my town were also investigating. I was like, no problem. I live in a town with a lot of like a very large Hispanic population. Everyone speaking Spanish to me, and I'm just like, girl, it's crazy. I don't understand Spanish. <laughs> it's like, loca. <laughs> loca. They were just like, I, they were like, loca. I was like, girl. <laughs> we all became friends that day. I'm friends with everyone on my block now. It's great. Okay. Christina. So yeah, okay, she was in the oven, and then she, now she's she's running marathons. Everyone thinks she's possessed now. And then one time, this is not funny. I'm sorry, Christina. One time... Um, she, <laughs> I do that all day at work. Sorry, everybody, this is not a visual part. Every time I'm about to say something mean about somebody, instead of like, bless your heart, I just do this side across. I'm like, girl, I'm not trying to be mean, but. 
she's a bitch. Like, <laughs> sorry, I know God's Ashley. I'm seriously like, I'm about to get mad at you. I'm so sorry. Okay, back to what you <laughs> My likes just shut off. It's good. It's God's telling us to stop. He, so he's like, stop. It's not funny. I'm like, you know, it's funny, God. You know my heart. Okay, so Christy, so one time this man yeah. caught her while she was running and broke her leg and then tied her up, which I don't know why he had to do that. Like, she's the town's. She, this person in the town, you know this. Why did you tie her up? But then Christina miraculously escaped okay. and she survived for days on her own virginal breast milk. And of course, she was already up in a tree again. So for C. <laughs> oh my God. I want she like a Netflix short film missing. made about Christina. I'm like stressed. Down. Could you imagine? No, could you honestly imagine a feral woman in a tree sucking on her titty because she just needed to survive? And she's, but at the same time, it's interesting though, but like all jokes aside, it's like you're, it's interesting to think of the perspective that people had on Christina, someone who mm-hmm. was truly a menace to society. And that's like how Christ was seen a true yeah. menace to society. And that's the reason why he was martyred. So it's, but like people are because like they just have this idea in their heads that this person is godlike, so they mm-hmm. just tolerate it. Yeah. They tolerate their bad behavior, and that's what's happened through just generations and thousands of years of institutionalized institutionalized religion. Mm-hmm. These people are godlike, regardless of their bad behavior. We're going to tolerate it because they are godlike because they claim exactly. to be. So why is it that when I run through the streets and climb in a tree and drink my own breast milk, I get the cops called on me? Because people, yeah, and people throw garbage at you. It's rude, right? (laughs) No, people just look up and they're like, oh yeah, San Francisco. There she goes again. Yeah. There she goes again. (laughs) Up in that tree. It's like, bitch, you're not lactating. That's not milk. Get down from there. Just you up in a tree, just like sucking on your own nipple. They're like, friend, please come down. (laughs) <laughs> okay? I'll just hiss. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. Okay. So the guy broke her leg. She climbed a tree with a broken. I'm even more surprised about the broken leg. She climbed a tree. Good for her. And then she survived. Girl, that's a her... whole demon. I'm sorry. <laughs> she survived on her own breast milk, even though she was never pregnant. And then she was chilling the tree. So then there were also reports that sometimes she would just throw herself under wheels of those like water mill wheels. She'd just throw herself under them and then she'd come out and she'd be like, I'm fine. And then they'd be like, stop throwing yourself under there because we keep having to call. <laughs> Could like, you imagine? Ta da. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're like calling the town fire brigade every single time. And they're like, Christina, you're wasting the town's resources. Like, we keep having to call people for you. Our um, taxpayer money. Okay. Yeah, so- Christina to me is now the folk saint of, of mania. Mania? Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> she basically is. She lived basically in rafts and survived only on what she could beg from like the different people in the town. And then it, and then when she got old, she's like, maybe I should go live in a convent now. So she did. So she went and lived in a convent. She died actually at the age of 74 doing all this wild shit in like 1224. Damn, that's pretty good. Like, <laughs> the fact that she lived a lot just being a wild woman. Like, okay. Feral. 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 And then I don't know if we're, I don't know where I got this quote, but Christina, it says Christina seemed like to have, people seem to have a divided opinion on her, obviously. Clearly. Some people said, yeah, some people were like, she is an actual menace to society. And other people were like, no, she's just like, really? She's just really? quirky. Yeah. She's a quirky girl. She's a quirky girl. She's quirky. So apparently she performed a couple miracles during her lifetime. A um, couple? And, yeah. It better have to do with ovens. <laughs> could find them they were just like she was so wild wild. we're not going to talk about the miracles we're just going to talk about how crazy she was which is terrible but she was never canonized so she is invoked for people who have mental illness or depression Um, interesting yeah her feast day is july 24th and she is considered a holy fool and people (laughs) yes (laughs) holy fool resonates Um, resonates yeah Yeah. (laughs) A holy fool refers to behavior I'm such just as a giving. Holy fool, baby, it's so cruel. <laughs> God. It refers to behavior such as giving up all of one's worldly possessions upon joining an aesthetic order or religious life, or deliberately flouting society's conventions to serve a religious purpose, particularly in Christianity. 
such individuals have historically been known as also blessed fools or foolish for Christ. Oh, I'm <laughs> foolish. <laughs> foolish Bitch, for Christ. you are foolish for Christ. <laughs> Good one. Mm-hmm. They're using that. Is that uh, you are so foolish for Christ. Is, <laughs> Conservatives. So that's Christina's story. We love this for her, I think. Okay. No, it's that that checks out. That really does check out. When you were telling the story, all jokes aside, coming from a person who is neurodivergent and also struggles with mental issues <laughs> on a constant. I And for anyone who's coming to listen to this episode from the Red Tax podcast knows my seasonal depression is finally lifting because we're going into the colder months. Yes. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I talk about it endlessly, especially during the summer, because my seasonal depression is always really terrible in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, Girl, so, get on antidepressants. Not that face. I just don't. It's very, it's manageable to a point to where I'm not, I am I have a lot of distractions when it comes mm-hmm. to making sure that I'm okay. And a lot of it, it's within my community and my friends. So I, my, my friends are, my, it sounds really cliche, but my friends are my antidepressants, honestly. And that's, that's sincerely. Awesome. I mean that with the utmost sincerity. It does check out in... What? I said she needs a prescription. I probably do. Listen, don't... You're probably right. But just considering the fact, like, all jokes aside, with the... When you see someone like that who is a menace to society, a lot of those people exist now. Mm -hmm. Those are... There are folks... When I visited San Francisco last year to go um, visit Rye... Those there, there are people who do their existence reflects what Christina went through mm-hmm. on the street. That's just normal when you're walking down. Like if you're walking down the street in the Tenderloin, that's just what is normal and things like that. I think it's something that people need that outlet and that 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 person that that spirit, regardless of whether Christina actually existed or not, doesn't matter. Because we were just talking about in our last um, episode with Chris, who we were talking about the historical Jesus, <laughs> and we were um, talking about whether the person, like the most famous person in the entire world, whether they existed in the way that people believe that he existed. And at the end of the conversation, we realized, I realized that it didn't really matter because mm-hmm. the spirit that I've cultivated a relationship with is what matters. Mm-hmm. And the stories and the folklore that surrounds Jesus is supplemental. It helps understand and personify what Jesus, quote unquote, did. Mm -hmm. Knowing that archetype and building a relationship with that spirit, whether you call it Christina or not, it doesn't matter whether it's true or not, because that is something that gives you an outlet, that gives you something. It brings you comfort. And also, if the spirit comes to you and presents themselves as the Saint Christina, or presents themselves as something else. That's mm-hmm. what you needed. That's what. Yeah. That's how spirit works. That's how your spirituality is supposed to work, is finding these relationships with spirits and cultivating those relationships. And I think archetypes and spirits like Christina are extremely important. Those are things that, you know, people will hear that story that you just said, that you just told, and they'll, they will in some ways maybe resonate with it. And they might be able to open up a new kind of spiritual realm in regards to this uncanonized saint. And uncanonized saints, they exist, and people Mm -hmm. venerate them fiercely. Mm -hmm. Some of my best friends are Santa Muerte devotees. Mm -hmm. And you're you're literally communing with death. When there are people who really do resonate with that aspect of life is death itself, the end of life. Yeah. Um, and there are people who resonate with needing a spiritual a spiritual assistance with their mental health. I think we all do. We all practice in some way. So it, it helps bring forth, be, just to help you survive. Mm-hmm. A spirit to help you with your mental health can help you survive. I Also, I'm not an advocate for telling like, use magic to help cure your mental illness. I think if you need professional help, I think you should seek professional help. Mm-hmm. Which is the reason why I'm shopping for a therapist currently. But at the same time, it's like those spirits at the same time, they're supplemental to your mental health. And I think to be able to maintain your spiritual, emotional and mental health, you need all of it. Yeah, that was beautifully said. That reminds me of the fact that my one spirit that I work with a lot is Nancy the Spider. And he is like a, he is a mythological trickster spirit from my tribe. So 
I always say, like, the reason I, I mean, that was also my other introduction to, like, magical thinking and magical things. I was bullied, and I talked about this actually before, but I was bullied a lot when I was a kid, and it sucked. You know, bullying always sucks. Um, and I, hearing in Nancy's stories, and Nancy's a spider. He's literally a little spider, and he gets over on everybody. He always gets work done without having to do it. He gets extra food when he wants just because he's slick. And I used to think this is all I need in my life because to be like this spider and I'll be like, it literally got me through people calling me names, me walking home crying, me like just feeling like I was literally nothing. And my dad telling me these stories, like I put myself in that place and just everything you're saying, I relate to so much, Vilga, because it didn't matter. If this is a mythological spider that conquers kingdoms. But in my in for me as a kid, it was everything to me because it made me feel like if this little spider can get through the day, me in first grade being called a pig walking down the street, I'll be like, I'll be good. I'll make it. And it's true. These this way, again, another reason I love I even started this podcast because those folk tales, they like you said, they can help and they can really supplement whatever people are going through and just hearing the stories of we have all of our arc our hero archetypes and all these different types of archetypes we have it can really just inspire people to keep going to get the help that they need it can it just it changes throughout history this is what people used if they didn't have something else or another outlet they use stories and they use figures to help them get through their day and to know that they're going to be okay and i just I love that. I love that about all spiritual figures. I think it's a wonderful thing. I personally believe that anyone is is worth of veneration or worship. Um, I don't think that there is any sort of this is just my own personal belief that there is no rule book in saying that someone there. There are dead celebrities that I venerate on my altar. Mm -hmm. I venerate Freddie Mercury and um, Pete Burns. A lot of people venerate Freddie Mercury and he's awesome. As a queer ancestor, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people do, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. we venerate, ancestral veneration is their only qualification they need is to be dead. And so their hood is one thing. I know that there is a a power in sainthood and recognizing a saint and praying to a saint. There there is a power there Mm -hmm. that, and I think there is a power and whether it's canonized or not, sainthood really does has its place in worship, but like the the spirit of the spider, the spirit of Christine, the spirit of someone that you admired who no, is no longer with us. There are people who venerate Betty White because yeah. of who she was. There are people who venerate, like I said, musicians that I really admire, like Freddie Mercury and Pete Burns, who are mm-hmm. no longer with us. And those are two of my greatest queer ancestors. And I, mm-hmm. I pray to them because of their queerness and who, what they represented. Yeah. And I think that is that holds a lot of value. And that is not inherently Catholic. I think that's just human. Speaking of word, love it. Okay. This has been so much fun. And we're coming to the end now. And I just want to ask you where we can find both of you on the internet if you want to leave your links and tell us what you do. And we already know you have a podcast, but you can keep, keep talking about it if you want because I love hearing about it. <laughs> yeah you can find me on instagram at the misty soul mystic misty soul spelled m-e-s-t-i-z-o i'm also on threads i'm on twitter or i guess it's called x at misty soul mystic i'm on tiktok i'm on yeah tiktok at misty soul mystic what else am i on yeah that's where you can find me you can book tarot readings with me through the link tree in my bio on instagram that'll take you to a square appointment site I do offer tarot readings. It's the only service I offer currently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Check out our podcasts. We're, we're cool. We're funny. We're hot. Yeah. I mean, yes, all those are facts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at them right now. They're very hot. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and um, my name is Voga, and I am Voga Ilumisente on Instagram. That's V O G A I L U M I C E N T E. And a lot of my, a lot of the magical stuff that a lot of the magical content that I create is just on the podcast. Like Mm -hmm. there is some magical stuff that I put on my Instagram, but a lot of it's just my face. And I'm really getting into like putting on my makeup on camera. So I'm doing that a lot right now. And that's really fun for me. So I think that's what my feed is going to look like. My, my feed is really just around magic 
being queer and also being a person of color here in Los Angeles, a lot of it is promos for events that I do because I am also a business owner with my business partner and very good friend, Francisco, who is El Brujo de la Guadaña, who we have a business together, like a pop-up shop, which is like apothecary and like oils and lotions and potions and such things and candles. We have anointed candles and we do pop-ups around LA at events, mostly spooky events and dark art mm. events and queer events. And that is at um, Vita Mortis underscore LA if you mm -hmm. want to follow that. And you can follow the podcast at the Red Text Podcast on Instagram. The podcast can be seen on YouTube for folks who need the closed captions. Mm -hmm. So we post video versions of our Instagram, of our podcast on, on YouTube. So folks can, who are not able to listen to the podcast can still consume the podcast if need be. We also have a Patreon, which is patreon.com slash the red text and we offer different benefits which includes like early released episodes and rosary circles where we get together once a month to do a rosary mm -hmm. on zoom which is really fun bonus episodes right now rye is producing queer is the word which is a really wonderful catholic queer reading through the bible yeah. which is really awesome and then we do we release bonus stuff every once in a while whenever we feel inspired but yeah, that's where you can follow the both of us. I don't think there's really anything else. I don't book services online right now because of like this transition I'm doing with the my current business partner, Howard. We're, we're trying to get online online readings. But if you are in the LA area and you happen to be available for one of our pop-up shops, please come and support small businesses. We love what we do and we do readings at our events as well. Other than that, um, that's it, I think. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't know what else. <laughs> Pretty soon I'm going to be producing. I'm going to be producing my own videos on YouTube. That's supposed to be happening really soon because now I actually have an idea of what I want to produce. Nice. Um, so I, I'm going to be on. I'm going to be on YouTube pretty soon, and that's going to be under the same name, Boga Illumisente. All right. That's it. Yes, I'm put links to everything in the show notes. Yay! I love a link. Okay, you heard it here first, folks. We have new friends of the podcast, and it's always fun to make more friends. Uh, we had a great time and I want to thank both of you. Thank you, Rai. Thank you, Voga, for spending time and talking to me and hearing all about Christina and her ovens and great. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> God bless Christina. Good God for bless her. Christina. Yeah, she's, she's Love that for her. I know. She's up in the sky. She's just in the tree in the sky and she's doing fine. Yeah, she's um, like, I told you. I told I you so. <laughs> I told you. I knew what I was doing in that oven. No, I know. Yeah. Everybody I want to thank all you audience people who are listening here. You know what you're listening to. It's Dine with the Divine. Again, I'm on Instagram, Threads, Facebook, and TikTok. And if you really like the show, please give us a rating. Apple Podcasts or Spotify and whatever platform you listen to if you're able to. If you have suggestions for the episodes or anything, you can DM me or you can email me at dinewiththedivinepod at gmail.com. If you want to follow me, Ashley, I'm at Sankofa HS, that's S-A-N-K-O-F-A-H-S on Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. And I'm Sankofa Healing Sanctuary on Facebook. Yay! Thank you, everybody, for coming. Have a fantastic week. Uh, 